Hello friends, welcome back to another new episode of the Canadian Vlogs and first of all, thank you very much for watching my channel. Immigration Canada has recently released their latest news updates for the Rural and Northern Immigration Pilot Program 2019 and that is meet the requirement. That means eligibility criteria. And today in this video, I will try to explain this eligibility criteria into more detail so that you guys will not have any confusion or misunderstanding in your application. Therefore, watch this video very carefully and till the end. And before I start information to the first time viewers, if you are watching my channel for the first time and hearing about this program for the first time, then I request you watch my previous video about this program. Uh, you can see here the link or I have also mentioned the link in the description of this video so that you guys will have a better understanding about this pro uh, this episode. OK, OK, friends, let's start. And the first requirement is get a recommendation which means in order to apply in this program, you must have a recommendation letter from the community. Where would you like to send your application? Now, you might be thinking, you are in a foreign country, you are unknown to them, then on what basis they will give you a recommendation? For that, let's have a look. So friends, here you can see that recommendation from a designated community. And what is written here, you must get a recommendation from one of the communities participating in the pilot. And so here you say, here you can see that they say that they decide who to recommend based on your intent to live in the community, your job offer in the community and economic developments of the community, your work experience and the skill set, your ties to the community. So guys, these are the basis upon which the community will decide the recommendation for you. Let me explain in, uh, about it in, in, in short. The first is your intent to live in the community, which means that uh, you have to give them an explanation, right? Why would you like to uh, stay there. Why did you choose that community? And it will be done through an interview or through a documentation. And the next is your job offer in the community and economic needs. And means they will also see that whether your job meets the uh, criteria or not and uh, how beneficial would be your job right, to the economic development of the community. So this is how also they will see. At the same time, they will see work experience and skill set, which means that, you know, like what is your skills, what are the experiences you had in your past, right? And whether your skills and experiences are good enough for the community, right? It will add any benefit, or it will add any right, in, in the development of the community or not. So, you know, like they will see this kind of things. And, this, and, the, and the last one is your ties to the community, which means that, you know, they will take, you know, they will try to see that whether or not you have any relatives, friends living in their community or not. Because that will, uh, you know, give them more uh, assurance that you will live more permanently there. But it doesn't mean that you must have a relative in their community. This is just a basis. If you don't have a relative, still you can send your application. They will see some other, other criteria, right? Your work experience, your offer, and your intention to live in the community. Okay, now let's talk about the work experience. You must have at least one year continuous work experience in the past three years. Okay, so here, don't get confused that in the three years, maybe you have to have a three years experience. No, in the past three years, right, you have to have a continuous work uh, one year work experience that means I would like to I will explain you here like for example uh, currently you're working as a uh, counselor let's say but it's been not, uh, not yet completed one year you haven't completed 1560 hours in the current job but two years before okay you were working as a lab technician and for that job you have you have you worked 12 months continuous work with one company, one employer, and you completed 1,560 hours, 1,560 hours, then you can apply for that, uh, for that job. And another thing you have to make sure that your work, your job is listed in the NOC Canada, which is National Occupation Classification, all right? So if you don't know where to check your job, National Occupation Classification, then, then I have given the link in the video description. Go there and check your job, whether it is listed or not. And the requirement number three is job offer. You must get a job offer from any of the companies of these communities, similar to Atlantic Immigration Pilot Program. And the condition of the jobs are, it must be a full-time job, uh, 
the working hours shouldn't be less than 30 hours a week and it has to be it must be a permanent job not a contract so these are the basic requirements of the job offer and regarding how to apply for a job or how to contact to an employer the information is not yet released i will update about it as soon as the information comes so don't worry about that and the requirement number four is skill level here the requirement is that you know your job and your skill has to be correlated okay and another good thing about uh, the skill level here is that you know uh, unlike previous uh, programs here not only uh, uh, like noc a o or b can apply also c and d also can apply that means all level of categories all level of skills people can apply which is a very good opportunity you know and the next requirement is for international student if you are an international student and have been living there in one of these communities and would like to participate in this program then you must have completed at least uh, two years courses in any of the public institutions in the community and have been living there for at least 16 months now the language requirement in this program the uh, in this program the language requirement is uh, distributed as per the skill level let's say for example if your skill category falls in the uh, noc 0 or a then the language requirement will be clb 6 or above and if your category falls in noc e noc b then the, the language requirement would be 5 and for c and d it's 4 Therefore, as per the language requirement is concerned, this is a very low requirement and everybody could get this one easily. Next is educational requirement. The minimum educational requirement for this program is Canadian High School Diploma or the equivalent. You must have done your ECA for your educational credential. And the final requirement is settlement of funds similar to all other province and nominee programs and peer programs this program also required you to have a sufficient fund to meet your living assistance here in canada as well as to support as well as also able to support your family back home all right guys let's have a look at the fund chart you can see here rural and northern immigration pilot program proof of funds and uh, let's go down and let's see here what is uh, what is uh, how much let's go down and let's have a look so here you can see there number of family members and funds you need suppose if you are one person single applicant okay required funds to show is 8722 canadian dollars if you are two you have to show 10858 so on right so here they have given all the uh, requirement they have given all the chart here and i will so like you can see at the down seven or more that means twenty three thousand eighty so this is the requirement of let's say your visa is granted through this program and you are coming to canada how will you manage your expenditure in the earlier days therefore in order to prove to the immigration canada that you have sufficient amount of fund to cover all the expenditure of your family members in the earlier three month period in canada and it also includes the expenditure of your family member back home you have to prove you have to submit a fund proof and basically this is a bank statement you know you have to submit during your application process so these are the eligibility criteria for the rural and northern immigration pilot program the requirements are quite simple and easy the program is on the threshold about to launch and i will get to know you as soon as the application gets started all right guys that's all for today i hope you like this video before you leave give your thumbs up and i will see you next week with another video until then take care have a good day bye bye all right guys these are the eligibility all right, all right guys these are the eligibility criteria for the rural and northern Alright guys, these are the uh, eligibility criteria. Okay. Alright guys, these are the eligibility criteria for the rural and northern immigration pilot program. The